Okay. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Mark Schaefer. I'm chairman of the Jefferson County Historic Preservation Commission. I'm here at the Chamber of Commerce in Fairfield to uh, officially unveil pictures that we've had um, framed with regard to the Loudoun Machinery Company. Um, today is the 20th, I believe, of August 1997. Usually I talk off the cuff on camera, but there's so much to remember and so many people, and I'm sure I've forgotten somebody. So anybody watching this on FPAC, if I've forgotten you and you feel offended, don't hesitate to give me a call and let me know that you need to be recognized at some point. First of all, I want to describe uh, what we've called, or come to call our Loudoun Project. Uh, it began with the founding of the Jefferson County Historic Preservation Commission several years ago. Uh, I can never remember exactly which year, but it was in this decade. Um, we first got what is called a Planning for Preservation Grant uh, from the Iowa State Historical Society. And in that grant, uh, we had the county surveyed in terms of uh, uh, entities, organizations, buildings, whatever, that had pertinent significance to the state or national history. And the Loudoun Machinery Company was designated, designated as having possible national uh, significance. And so that's what we've been concentrating on the last two or three years. Last year we completed what is called an intensive uh, survey and Iowa site inventory. And we were able to, to publish what is called an intensive survey, the cover of which uh, is a copy of the 1918 Barn Planning Service catalog. And this oh, it involves family history. It talks about various buildings around town that are connected with the Loudoun Machinery Company. Uh, tons of information. And these are on sale. You can buy them either at the Chamber of Commerce or there are copies available at the auditor's office at the courthouse. This year, we've once again been funded by the Iowa State Historic, uh, I get the names of the organization mixed up. It's the Iowa State Historical Society. I started to say Preservation Commission. The Iowa State Historical Society is again funding in part um, a grant for a project, and this time we'll be nominating up to, I think, 20 uh, Loudoun-related sites in Jefferson County to the National Register of Historic Places. Now, that's a background of the uh, Preservation Commission. And uh, today, that we're specifically uh, unveiling these pictures that were uh, hung here at the Chamber last week. I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce, uh, specifically Mike Brewer, who has just left uh, for a new job in, in uh, Burlington for agreeing to let us hang things here, and to Bob Phipps and the staff for making this uh, possible. It's going to be great to have public access to this collection. People come here to uh, you know, pay their cable bill and their phone bill. It's a constant stream of people, so we're going to get a lot of public exposure, and that's greatly appreciated. Uh, we want to thank the County Board of Supervisors and the Auditor's Office, and specifically I'd like to thank my father, former Supervisor Keith Schaefer, who played a, a big part in establishing the Preservation Commission locally. Um, I'd like to thank Preservation Commissioners Lillian Theta, who's not here, Dr. Robert Tree, who's going to be Vanna White for me here. He's going to be pointing and whatever. He, he didn't know that until he walked in the door. Um, our other commissioners are John Lippman and Jean Lukey, and I'd like to thank all of them, including my wife Susan, for donations of uh, crackers and cheese and um, Easter's and Hy-Vee supplied relish and fruit trays, so we want to recognize them. I'd like to thank the Fairfield Ledger for their unstinting publicity of this project and Marnie Mellon in particular. She's given us a lot of wonderful articles. Uh, the County Fair Board will be uh, displaying another collection of photographs at the uh, Extension Service Office when those are framed, and I'd like to thank them for their cooperation. I'd like to thank Fairfield uh, Public Access TV, specifically Richard Thompson and Susan Kessel and uh, Dick Ward. Lots and lots of hours uh, filming and, and broadcasting the work that we've done on the project. Will Page, our historian uh, in Des Moines, he's done a wonderful job in putting together the intensive survey. And finally, Dave Neff, get on camera here. Uh, Dave represents the Greater Jefferson County Foundation. It's their generosity that made framing these pictures possible. And Dave, who are your trustees or your board? They're not trustees, they're... Board of Directors. Okay. 
The executive officers are Rosal Iman, is our president. Don Wallace is our vice president. Norma Robinson is our secretary, and I'm the treasurer. Great. And then we have probably 15 people all together. I won't try and name everybody, but uh, all those folks serve without pay, and, and the foundation continues to grow. As you okay. might have seen recently, we received a very nice gift of over $700,000 from one, one beneficiary. So Great. the foundation is alive and well, and by the end of the year, it will be over a million and a half dollars. So we're very oh, thankful for that. That's wonderful. We appreciate your help. You. The only reason Dave's on camera, though, is I didn't want my wife to yell at me after this is over and say that I hogged the camera. Oh, was right? That? You didn't, Mark. Good, no, good. So I'm off the hook now. All right. Um, <laughs> thank you. Now comes the big part. Now, now this is what's going to happen here is we're going to do the actual unveiling. And as I call your name, if you're not too camera shy, I'd appreciate it if you'd come and help me out here. Um, the first picture is this large uh, original measure drawing. It's a floor plan of a barn that was to be built in New Jersey. And we have no idea if it was ever built or not. This was donated by Mr. and Mrs. Tom Loudon. And if some members of those of that household would care to come forward. I'd appreciate it. Mrs. Loudon, your name's on the your name's on the card too. Oh, bless your heart. All right. This is Tom Loudon. Tom, if you'd peel away the number one card there. Very carefully. Without yeah. Thank you. The card says uh, donated by Mr. and Mrs. Tom Loudon in memory of Lydia Montgomery. This was found in uh, her effects after she passed away. Uh, it was in her brother Charles's things. Yes. And Charles was a, a, an employee, was he not? He was a salesman. For OK. A while. All right. So that would, was back in the 30s, I believe. Oh, before that. Was that? OK. All right. So this is probably from the 20s, maybe, this drawing? Maybe even before that. <laughs> Sounds good. It so, may have been in the teens or early 20s. OK, great, great. So this is a real treasure, and we appreciate you donating this, because it's this picture that made all the rest of this feasible as well as uh, desirable. So okay. thank you for your generosity. You're very welcome. Thank you. All right. And if David and Roberta McCoy would come up. Oh, oh, OK. Well. I have to get up. All right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to trip on the cords if I'm not careful. Right. There we go. All right. Now, this is Roberta Loudon McCoy and her son David. And David, if you would go over there to the number two. You get to keep that. <laughs> OK. Mrs. McCoy is special because it was her father was a longtime president of the company. No. Oh yes. That's yeah. Pre okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, but R. B. Loudon was uh, was her father, and if I'd lived 50 years ago, he would have been my neighbor right across yes, the street. Right. Roberta used to sneak over to our house when she got in trouble, and and beg uh, meringue kisses from. <laughs> Mame Wells. Mame Wells that lived in our house. She and was my third mother. <laughs> so we've got, in fact, Roberta gave me the, the recipe for the meringue kisses, which I, <laughs> we haven't tried it yet, but I've got it on file. Uh, but this picture, it's a double picture. It's showing a picture of William Loudon, the founder of the company. Uh, his first invention was patented in 1867. And then underneath that is the Loudon guarantee that has your, your father's signature. Mm. And then a can of the famous Loudon gray paint. <laughs> so uh, I thought that was an appropriate picture to have All your right. name on. And it is framed in your honor. And well, we, thank we you. appreciate so much all your delightful input. You've just been a joy to get to know. Well, I want to speak up a minute. OK. I thought my father's been neglected in history. Uncle Will, his oldest brother, there were six boys. And Will was the oldest. My father was the youngest. And Uncle Will was a delightful man and could create things, but he had no business sense at all. He went bankrupt three times. And he called my father, who was practicing law in California, said, would you please come back? I think I've got something good here, but I can't make it go. 
<laughs> so Father came back, so I want to give him a lot of credit. Well, I th <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And Mrs. McCoy has just been a delight to get to know. She has recollections of, of trips to around Europe to visit um, Loudoun facilities, you know, Loudoun equipped uh, estates. Yeah. And if you have time afterwards, we'd like to interview you some more to relate really? some of those stories. I can't remember anything, but I'll try. All right. <laughs> so thank you again so much. Thank you. Now, watch out for the cord. And David, we can take some pictures later if okay, you want. Great, great. Thank you so much. And David, by the way, is, he's a lawyer in Mount Pleasant and has a nice collection of uh, Loudon memorabilia. Um, R.B. Loudon was a, an acquaintance of General Pershing when they were students together at Kirksville. Yes. And they have little uh, notes from him, things like, sorry, I can't meet with you because of the Mexican situation. It's like he had to go fight Pancho Villa. So this, this family has had s such a rich... Uh, interconnectedness with this country's history. This lady here shook hands with Woodrow Wilson. What? You shook hands with Woodrow Wilson? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's, that's very exciting. She didn't wash her hand for a week. <laughs> she didn't wash her hand for a week. Well, bless your heart. Um, the next picture, number three, and Dr. Tree, if you would point to the barn plan right there, and that's, that's the area illustrated by the catalog pages of, by number three. Uh, Beth Larson is not here. Her husband, Kenneth, was quite an avid enthusiast of the Loudon, the Loudon story. And Dr. Tree, if you'd peel off the number three card there. Right. He farmed east of town and northeast of town and uh, was really fascinated by the Loudon uh, business and was instrumental in the very beginning of pointing us in the direction that we needed to go in terms of some of the research. He had a couple of catalogs that he loaned to me that gave me a sense of the breadth of the Loudon um, a line of products. So we are very, very grateful to Kenny Larson. Um, this illustrates the Loudon nameplate that was above each of the, the manger stalls that the Loudon company would produce for you. And then below that are two illustrations of the tilting manger dividers that facilitated cleaning uh, out the, uh, the, the barn. That nameplate had two pieces of icing glass, and then you put the name of your cow in front of it there. <laughs> That's Bud Dimmit talking there, yeah. Yeah, it had two pieces, he was saying it had two pieces of icing glass sandwiching the, the name card. So could you see the name from both sides? Yes. Okay. And in fact, we've been donated one of those nameplates with a photocopy of the uh, cow's name, and then it had all of her particulars in terms of uh, pounds of milk production, and she was a national champion of some sort. So. Um, eventually, we'll have that on display somewhere. Okay, um, Mrs. Raymond is not here. Number four, uh, down here, right beside me, and Dr. Tree, if you'd peel that away. Right. Dick Raymond was allowed an employee, and shortly before he passed away, gave me a number of things that uh, were pertinent to the history of the Loudon Company. This picture here is important because it pointed us in the direction of the Smithsonian Institution. Um, or is it Institute? I can never remember. Institution. Institution. I should have stayed with my first decision. <laughs> anyway, it's a woodcut from the 1869 catalog that shows a haystacker. And um, the ACO Advancer, which was the parent company that bought the Loudon Division at one point, put out a bicentennial um, publication. And this was an illustration of the Loudon Division of its early history. And it said this woodcut was in the Smithsonian collection. So I made some phone calls, about five, I think. And Marnie Mellon went to Washington, D.C. to visit her daughter, just, just happened to be going there. So she made a trip to the Smithsonian, photographed um, a number of uh, articles they had there, and uh, made photocopies of glass plate negatives that are prints from glass plate negatives that they have. And I have those in a notebook over here that show the pictures that we want to have reprinted for display. So, uh, yeah. I had two guys pack all that stuff. Delbert Spates gathered all that stuff up that went to the Smithsonian Institute. Uh huh. It was every catalog that Loud was ever made. And then we had the old glass uh, negatives, and then we had some on wooden blocks, the brass mm -hmm. printing things that was upstairs. We packed all them up and sent them up there. That was Delbert Spates that did that. He gathered them all up. And well, we, we've got some, Marnie made some nice uh, color photographs of the different articles that they had laid out. It was quite a trick tracking the stuff down because 
I figured I'd just call the Smithsonian and get, get the right um, office, and they just go to their card catalog and look up Loudon's or William Loudon. But they needed to have the name of the person that signed the bill of whatever it was. And uh, I hunted high and low, and then it turned out that Dick Raymond knew who signed the th thing, and he was at that time working at Executive Realty, which was a block from my house. So I'd, I'd literally called all over the country trying to find out this information, and here it was a block from my house. Well, I've got a letter from the Smithsonian that uh, they sent back here to people that was connected with that somewhere at home. I don't know I'd like a photocopy of that if, if we could if get one. Find it. Okay, great. Um, let's see. And number five, right here, um, there are the horse stalls. I guess you don't, Right there, right there. Is that going to work? And that's number five. This is in memory of Dale McLean. Mrs. McLean couldn't make it today. Uh, he was a longtime Loudon employee, and I'm not sure what his exact duties were. He was a welder. I do know that he's one of the reasons that there's some Loudon uh, factory equipment on display at Old Thresher's now. Uh, steam air compressor, was that? Well, that was down in the basement when Loudon donated it to them, and they'd come up and got it. As I, I was talking to Daryl Edeker, who was in town a couple of weeks ago, and he was saying that they, they were just going to scrap that, and Dale convinced him not to, and that's how it got to the uh, Old Thresher's Museum. So that's a, that's a connection with, with well, another... He looked after it down there every year at Old Thresher's. He was usually around yeah. the display. So we're grateful to Dale McLean for having that foresight. Um, number six. Come on, bud. You've been talking. It's your turn to get on camera. And Mr. Drobny, would you join in, please? We're dedicating number six to you guys. If one of you would peel that off. This is in honor of, of Glenn Dimmitt here. And, and what was your exact duties there? Well, I started out taking stuff off the paint line, went to shipping room, then receiving room, then to a supervisor. All right. Well, we, uh, I picked out this catalog page for you because you've donated several uh, hay carriers. And these aren't hay carriers. These are the other end of the stick, as it were, the litter carriers. And, well, I guess there's some feed carriers, too. Well, my father made about a million of those Did he? litter carriers. <laughs> so that's appropriate. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Drobny, I've asked you to take part in this honor too because you were an engineer, if I'm correct, and you designed overhead handling systems. Right. So this is the pre this is the precursor of what you did. That's right. Forerunner of the overhead systems. And you were active during the war yes. years. Yes. Now you told me at one point that the war works spilled into the street. A lot of the a lot of the uh, Bridge Street was where we manufactured a lot of the cranes. Well, okay. They were set up and assembled out there before they were shipped out. That's check, amazing. Check, check, checked out right out in the right out. Any special state. security measures taken? Not to my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, there was. <laughs> they put uh, what they call jap doors, or put screens on most of the doors so somebody could throw a bomb in there at one time. Oh, for heaven's sake. On the sides of the building on the west side there. And they called them jap doors? I think that's what they call it. <laughs> Well, you wouldn't get away with that today, but that's all right. <laughs> Did you ever get the catalogs that I give to uh, Lillian Theta? Yes. You got all that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That and the uh, seniority list. Right. I've got all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So anything else you, you gentlemen want to add? We sure appreciate your input. And uh, well, the only thing I say is what I did was uh, follow up on the barn line which was a forerunner of all the overhead material handling. And uh, we had, as far as Loudon was concerned, they had quite a uh, part in the war effort as far as, because the, uh, the uh, plane that carried the bomb was made in Marietta, Georgia, Georgia and Loudon uh, made all the so, uh, overhead and material handling. Yeah, did you just, was it your designs that were used there? Yes. Yeah, we shipped okay. over a hundred carloads of stuff down there to wow. that plant. Yes. Wow. The same way out in Renton, Washington. 20, so the, 29, so, there was 29 miles of rail alone. So the, the Enola Gay was manufactured on your designs. Right. That's amazing. And then, then the uh, Manhattan Project followed that right up where, where the bomb was made and we had 
quite a part in, in uh, overhead. So I'd shift most of that stuff down there in railway express cars. They'd set them in there and we'd load them in there by hand. Yeah. It's something. And tell us, tell us how you found out about the nature of your work. I mean, you knew it was top secret, but... Well, after the, after the bomb was dropped, Roy Loudon came up to my table and he says, you know what you were working on? I says, no, I was for just A, B, and C is all I knew what was handled. Well, was, he says, well, they just dropped a, a Tommy bomb on Hiroshima. What a way to get that news. That's just amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. The well, government inspector that was in there for that, somebody we asked him what they made down there, and he says, well, there's a lot of people in prison for telling what was going on down there. That's all he'd ever say. <laughs> so he, he stayed out of jail then, I hope. Yeah. All right, well, that's good. Well, since you guys are still here, Julius Hillary was not able to make it today. Would you gentlemen move over to number nine and uh, unveil that for us? That was one of the early water bowls. All right. All right. <laughs> you need a sleep <laughs> souvenir? Yeah. The reason we chose um, the water bowls for Julius's uh, picture is that Julius worked, he was a pattern maker, and he worked with uh, Albert Neller, right? Right. Who was William Loudon's original pattern maker. And uh, I've enjoyed Mr. Hillary talking about how Neller would say, we made that bo water bowl so it would fit over a man's knee. And I like that kind of that, <laughs> that visual image. But Albert Neller was pretty handy. William Loudon would cut little patterns out of paper and kind of throw them together and, and describe what he wanted. And then Neller would actually make up the pattern for it. So that's, that's an important, um, really important line in terms of uh, health in the dairy. It, it maintained fresh water for the cattle whenever they wanted to drink. And uh, did they freeze? They didn't freeze either, did they? Maybe they did. Well, not really. They had, them barns were pretty tight. Yeah. So, but that was a lot better than pumping the water by hand. Well, they used to freeze them up and have to order new valves every once in a while. But that wasn't built in obsolescence. No. Oh, that's good. All right. So thank you, gentlemen. We'll go on. You're welcome. And I think we have one more, the Fultons. Would you two care to step forward, or one of you anyway? <laughs> that half. If you'd care to unveil number 10 there. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is Mr. Loyal Fulton. Oh, you need to get up here. Right. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to talk, but I need to talk about you. Um, we're, de we're dedicating this picture to his parents, uh, Fred and Rosa Fulton. Uh, his dad built one of the last barns in the county designed by the Barn Planning Service, and these are the blueprints here in, in hand. And we may want to unroll those later, show them on camera, if you, if you don't mind. Um, should we tell how what we thought happened to him? <laughs> I've known about these pl plans just forever and ever, and he kept meaning to show them to him. Me and we were going to photograph them and photocopy them. And then last Christmas, you'd gotten them out to show people, the, the family, and we were just sure they'd gotten thrown away with the wrapping paper. <laughs> <laughs> but where were they? Oh, they were hiding in my gun cabinet. <laughs> somebody, put them in, somebody put them in the gun case so they wouldn't get lost. So we're very relieved to see this little cardboard tube here. But uh, the barn planning service is important because it was the first free barn planning service in the country established in 1907, uh, exactly 40 years after Loudon first uh, patented his hay carrier. And uh, it, was a, it was a good marketing device. I don't know that too many small farmers uh, had barns designed by the service, but they certainly planned their barns so that the Loudon equipment would fit them. And, uh, They'd give you standard plans for like if you had 10 cows and four horses or whatever. And you could design your own barn. And Gene Ludke, for example, thinks that his father's barn, uh, although not designed specifically by the service, was inspired by the Loudon designs. So um, I end with the Fulton barn because it's a, one of the few maybe the only barn in Jefferson County, because we found out about this right away, and I thought, oh, they're going to be everywhere. But we found out that they were pretty rare in terms of being specifically designed by the company. Cow stanchions and hay carriers are a dime a dozen, but uh, this 
the barn is really a treasure and they've really kept it in good shape, so we appreciate that. Um, eventually, we hope to have self-guided tours around town. Uh, there are lots of sites here in town. The two, two of the churches were designed by the barn architects uh, here. Uh, Tom Loudon's home was, as well as several other houses here in town. There are a gazillion garages that have Loudon garage doors on them. Uh, the grape arbor behind St. Mary's Church is made of Loudon uh, couplings and, and st uh, stall piping. It's, there's probably some clotheslines around someplace. <laughs> Mrs. McCoy, I think, has a, don't you have a basketball hoop in your backyard? A what? A basketball hoop? Oh, yeah, that's from Ottawa. But that, yeah, that's from the, they bought a company in Illinois that made playground equipment. So there are lots and lots of uh, places in town that I think would draw uh, tourists here, like who are going to Old Threshers, who might be staying in Fairfield, would have an obvious interest in, in seeing what the Loudon company was really up to. Um, we're trying to establish sites around Iowa that have a connection with Loudon design. For instance, the uh, 1900 barn on Old Hist or Living History Farms has a Loudon hay fork in it. Um, the, there are some of the barns up at Ames that are Loudon designs. So if we can get a little itinerary, a Loudon itinerary around Iowa, we think that would be a good way to promote Fairfield. Eventually, we hope to have a permanent home for this collection and other uh, artifacts that have been donated. And uh, if anybody has something they want to donate, just give us a holler. <coughs> the intensive surveys are on sale. Uh, they're $15, either here at the chamber or at the courthouse in the auditor's office. And uh, I think we're going to break for refreshments now. And uh, if some of you want to stick around for individual interviews on camera, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Number seven. <sighs> number seven. Yeah, number eight. We forgot Pat Kessel. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. Darn it. I hear I thought I'd done it perfectly. Yeah, this is in memory of uh, Pat's father, George Kessel. Uh, his dad donated a 1918 Loudon catalog. Or maybe your mom gave it to us after your dad passed away. I'm not sure which it was. I'd have to ask her. But that catalog is now in Ames with uh, Rob Loudon, and he's going to scan um, the pages onto uh, uh, compact discs. We'll have that catalog as well as some of the other things that I gave him that, uh, and I forgot number eight too, didn't I, Nancy? Um, they'll be on compact discs uh, for... Uh, reference at the public library. Yeah, Nancy Ingwall, you want to come front and center? <laughs> so I spent, I spent half an hour making these name, these number cards real careful so they were nice and neat. And I can't even follow numbers. This is, Nan <coughs> this is Nancy Ingwall, and I so appreciate your help. Um, she and Mildred Morton are sharing the honors with this picture. Nancy and Mildred both did either research or typing or record keeping for us, and we appreciate that. Nancy went through piles of catalogs and photocopied all the examples of Loudon facilities throughout the world, and then she filed them in the photocopies in files according to state or country. So that's, mm -hmm. that's been a big help, and we appreciate that. And the uh, colored picture there is from the 1918 catalog. Not specifically the one you donated, because your dad had his name on it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, oh, well, this is donated to your, or dedicated to your father, not to you. Right. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really getting things fouled up here. But you're the reason we have it. And okay. uh, Harry Morton, Mildred Morton's husband, also worked at Loudon. And uh, she, was, she was a big help to us. Um, the thing I like about the little insert at the top corner, that's from a, uh, a book of clip art that Dick Raymond had given us. And it shows a picture of William Loudon holding the book that you see illustrated there. And then there are all these little barns kind of tumbling around the border. And that's advertising the barn planning service. The cow with uh, its head in the stanchion appears on the back of that book. And this was the design that was used in the teens up into the early 20s, we know. The design changed for sure in the 1930s. But this, this is really a great cover. I think that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I get this off of here. You can give me just a little background before we start. Okay. Um, 
the purpose of this exhibit today, this was to highlight the Loud Machinery Company catalog? Yes. I don't know if that we have uh, donated by Tom and Dot Loudon. Okay. And this was, how long have you been working on this particular project? Oh, this is, this will be the, this is, our, this is our third grant, probably four years. Okay, and how much uh, was the grant, the amount of? This time around it was $8,000, and that will, what that basically does is hires the historian that knows how to jump through all the, you know, hoops and knows all the red tape for nomination to the National Register. Um, there will be between 12 and 20 buildings that will be uh, hopefully listed that we're gonna nominate. Those include the Methodist Church and the old Christian Science Church that were designed by the bar barn planning architects, uh, two different men. I think Guy Carpenter did the Methodist Church and a guy named Peter Key, uh, I forget his first name, did the other one. Of course, the old factory building, the Broadway building, uh, will be nominated. Several private homes around town. Uh, a couple of barns in the county that we know were influenced or designed by the Barn Planning Service. Uh, there are some garages around town that have either are illustrated in old catalogs that still exist, or garages that have the Loudon equipment for the door, you know, the door sliding door hangers. Seems like there are some other buildings too, but oh, the playground equipment. Um, the merry-go-round of the country club was uh, a Loudon product. Okay. So this particular unveiling today, these pictures that are on the wall here, these deal specifically with what's in the catalog and deal mm -hmm. specifically with with Loudon. Now, is this a Loudon factory or, or yeah. is it the Loudon? This is the factory uh, on on broad on West Broadway. That's called the Broadway Building now, and um, bas basically the reason we have this specific exhibit is because of that measured drawing that. Uh, Tom and Dot Loudon gave us the large uh, drawing here at the chamber, and then it specifies different Loudon equipment. That's why we picked out the, thing, the things that we did. Okay, so people wanting to get a copy of this, uh, you mentioned the catalogs are on sale. Where do they need to go, okay. and how much are okay. they? Okay, actually, the intensive survey is on sale, and there are illustrations from the catalogs as well as family pic uh, pictures, pictures of family homes, some of the other buildings that are going to be nominated to the National Register. They can be picked up for fifteen dollars either at the Chamber of Commerce or at the auditor's office at the county courthouse. Okay. And we also talked with several different family members. How many members were here today that uh, they date back to the Loudon uh, the plant or at least right. they have connections? Right. Uh, Roberta Loudon McCoy was here. She lives in Mount Pleasant and she's actually uh, the daughter of R. B. Loudon, who was William Loudon the uh, William Loudon was the founder. Uh, R. B. was the president that kind of got things going. Mrs. McCoy was very, very pointed in her comments and saying that it's actually her dad that put things on the map because William, although he was a brilliant inventor, didn't have a very good business sense. And RB knew how to hold on to money and how to make money. And that's what really got things going. After and then, Once the Loudon plant got started, where did it branch out from there? They had branch offices in, in Canada. Uh, there was one in Albany, New York. They had a field representative that uh, took care of sales in Europe. Um, they built barns on every car continent except Antarctica. By 1930, the Barn Planning Service was responsible for, I believe, 18,000 barns throughout the world. And uh, millions of barns were equipped with their hay carriers and dairy equipment and so forth. So really Loudon had quite an impact on the Fairfield mm -hmm. community in Jefferson County. Yeah, and actually on the world, too, because uh, the overhead handling systems for, for feed and and manure disposal were later uh, adapted for heavy equipment handling, uh, either during or right after World War I. Uh, an arms manufacturer saw some of the Loudon displays at a, a fair or an exposition of some sort in Pennsylvania and wanted to adapt that for um, carrying heavy loads in his factories. And William Loudon first didn't want to sell them because uh, you know, this is for hollow manure. You didn't put bullets and guns in here. And uh, finally, the man prevailed and bought 40, I believe. And that's what the heavy equipment handling, or uh, how the heavy equipment line began to uh, come into being. After World War II, the barn line was discontinued. Uh, farming had changed. Uh, people no longer put up the loose hay. So there wasn't the need for the type of equipment that had been the mainstay of the company for so long. 
and they went into the heavy equipment handling business. Apparently Loudon also had quite an impact in the war effort itself. Yes. Uh, Ed Drobny was here today. Uh, he was a, an engineer for them at that time, and uh, they had some top secret contracts. It turns out that Ed designed the overhead system on which the Enola Gay uh, and the uh, atom bomb itself were, were constructed. So some some parties would say that Ed Drobny won the war for us. <laughs> Histor historians will debate that, I'm sure. Okay, Mark, anything else you'd like to add? Um, just that I'm real excited by this project. I think it's, I think it has a lot of potential if we develop it properly for uh, bringing tourism to the, to the town. Um, I can see where Fairfield uh, could be on uh, like a agricultural, uh, historical uh, tourist itinerary. If you were going to Living History Farms, um, the Amish community in Kelowna, Villages of Van Buren, uh, Old Threshers uh, reunion in Mount Pleasant. Fairfield makes a, a logical stopover. So we will have some self-guided tours uh, developed at some point, and hopefully we'll have a permanent home for not only these pictures, but a number of other things that, that people are, are donating. More is being donated all the time. In fact, today just somebody handed me a, a, a carpenter's pencil, one of those flat pencils with the Loudon uh, barn equipment listing on it. Stalls, stanchions, water bowls, and so forth. I mean, every couple of months I'll get a call from, let's say, Tampa, Florida, or someplace in North Dakota. Somebody has something they want to give us. So will all the pictures then be on display here at the Chamber of Commerce, at least Indefin until uh, Indefinitely, yep. For some time now. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Appreciate that. I'm blind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to check out on Roberta here. All right. And where's the microphone? Microphone right, right there. Here. Okay. So I haven't heard direct. Okay. Is that good enough right like, like that? Yeah, that okay. Be fine. Well, here we are again. I've wanted to get you on videotape for some time. Um, this is Roberta Loudon McCoy, my old neighbor. I've, I've never lived on that corner when you did, but it's nice to think of you that way. Um, I was. I really appreciated what you said about your father being so important in making the Loudon well, uh, products so well known. Mm -hmm. That was great. Very nice. Thank you. Tell us. Tell us the story about your nephew feeling homesick during the war. Oh yes, uh, Alan McCoy, my nephew, my husband's nephew. And I was in the Navy during the war and out in the Pacific, and he was very lonely. He was on this battleship. And he happened to have to go down in the lower uh, decks or something. And he had to look up, and here was some Loudon track. It said Loudon on it. Oh, boy. He said it cheered him up right then. And he was a Isn't that incredible? person from then on. He'd get lonesome. He'd go down and look at the track. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember the name of the ship? No, I don't. Of course, if one ship had it, they probably a lot of them did. Well, you see, they moved everything up. There's one of them. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Um, I was fascinated the last time we talked about your trip to Belgium in 1927. Tell us about that. Well, it was not too much to tell. My father was never wanted to go to Europe, and mother and I thought it'd be lots of fun, but we couldn't move him. But suddenly, <laughs> he was made a representative of the Rotary Club in Austin, so we got to go to Europe as a member of the Rotary Club. And after that, we uh, got a little car and toured over in Europe. And didn't you go with Dr. Clark and his well, wife Dr. and Clark niece? Dr. Clark and his wife were there with us. And uh, well, they were only with us in Belgium. I see, okay. They left us in France. They okay. had their own car. And we had a little Citroën. Okay. And father couldn't drive, so I drove. And I <laughs> oh, they were in frail hands, but we got along uh, all right. Well, you told me one time. No, uh, Mrs. McCoy has already bought it. Nancy, you'll need to go to the, the auditor's office. Okay, sorry. They're selling like hotcakes. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I'm glad. Um, well, then uh, Mr. Hinchcliffe was our representative in Europe. Okay. He allowed an equipment. They were, he was working out of the England. The kings over there had the whatever you call it. Okay. And, and like then, those royal stables and so forth? Huh? Did the royal stables have Loudon equipment? Know. Okay. I don't know. 
But what we were proud of was the uh, this Russian, this deposed Russian. Oh, the Chernoffs. Chernoffs had this beautiful estate down at Biarritz. And so he wanted us to come down and see it. He said he was so proud of it. And it was a whole out and equipped barn with uh, everything in it. He said he wanted to establish a dairy farm because France didn't know the value of milk. They drank too much wine. <laughs> So he wanted to have them have milk. That's wonderful. So that's why he built this wonderful berry farm. And the, the pictures you have of the Cossack herdsmen are wonderful. Oh, yeah. The Cossacks, the, the men that had to flee when the communists came in Russia, he always took them in, no matter how many he had. And out in the uh, working places, here were all these young men and older men, the young men with white hair. Oh, my. Which was startling. But he said, well, they've been through so much, their hair turned black. Sure. Sure. But it was a delightful place. So the photographs you have of the, the man in the fitted coat with the piping across his chest and the, the high boots and the fur hat holding the cow by the halter, oh. that's a wonderful picture. Oh, well, I'm glad. And for people that would like to picture um, the estate, the pictures you showed me, looks a lot like the uh, Vanderbilt house Biltmore in North Carolina. It's that kind of style. Well, Although really, I'm, sure it's, I'm sure it's much older. I'm sure it's much older. But that's my recollection of the pictures that you showed me. Um, tell us about the um, the big picture in the public library that your parents donated. Oh, the uh, picture of the oh, what's like his name? Shriner. Pat. Well, Pat, Pat Shriner painted, painted it. it. Yes, but it was a picture of the, the uh, blacksmith shop. Right. And, and which, which horse? The Which horse, horse is yours? Prince. Our old driving horse, Prince, we just love. He's in it, but they just got his rear end and tail. <laughs> Which is too bad. Too bad. Well, anybody that's interested in looking at that painting, it's now hanging in the new library in the large conference room. Oh, I haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, so it's, it's still in good hands. Well, it's a nice picture. Yes, it is. It's very nice. Um, oh, my gosh. I'm trying to think of the things that we've talked about before. Well, uh, I wouldn't remember. <laughs> well... Tell about the uh, Christmas parties at the factory. Oh, when they put the second edition on that new building to the mm -hmm. west, they wanted to celebrate, so my father had a stove put in up there, a gas stove. This is on the third floor. Uh -huh. And we all, all the relatives, we had so many relatives, that here. we had about 20, 26 people and some friends. And we celebrated New Year's Eve and also Christmas. And uh, they also had a big dance where they invited a lot of the crowd. And I was so thrilled because I got to run the elevator. The big freight elevator that's still there. Great. <laughs> oh, is it still there? It's still there, yep. Okay. Yep, I, I think it's still working. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Well, can you think of anything else you'd like to share with us? Oh, well, I wish I could remember some more interesting things. Well, I think you've done pretty well. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate your interest in our old factory. Well, good, good. It's It's been fascinating. I. I tell people 20 years ago growing up on the farm, well, 30 years ago, that if anybody had, be, had told me I'd be interested in uh, hay carriers and, <laughs> and cow stanchions. stanchions, I would have spit in their face. But <laughs> it really has been fascinating, and I've met a lot of interesting people. Oh, good. And uh, well, we had wonderful people working there. Well, in, in your you family, see there were three ex other places: Albany, yes, <clears throat> Ottawa, Canada. And St. Paul. And your family was so influential in the community. I didn't. Didn't your uncle Will uh, help found the Elks Club here? And of course, I don't know. and your dad. He was the first exalted ruler, I believe. And, and there's uncle a loud. Uncle Will was very interested in Chautauqua. Yes. He promoted Chautauqua. Okay. And there's a Loudon um, barn ventilator on the roof of the Elks Building. You can still oh. still just make out the word Loudon on it. <laughs> and then your father, I imagine, helped establish the Rotary Club here. Yes, I did. He'd be an early, he was an early leader. So your family has done a lot for this community, and, well, we and we're proud to have you. My mother was a very civic-minded woman. She did, didn't she do a lot with the library? She was on the library board? She was on the library board from its inception out at the West End. Okay. She founded that. Well, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for talking well, to thank us. Thank you. I've enjoyed the now, you, now you can go have your refreshments. Oh, all right. Yeah. David, that's your book up there. What's that? What's that? Did, 
Have, has, does she already have one of those books? I just thought of that. Okay, all right. Well, you found one of the pencils, did you? Well, it was just, yeah, you want to look at it? Yeah, I've seen lots Thank of you. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Appreciate it. Well, appreciate, appreciate all you've done. Well, I appreciate all you've helped with, too. I don't know if that's going. I don't think that's going, is it? I don't know. Lights on. I don't. No, a guy gave me one of the milks to one of the welded up ones here. Just Dave, is this camera going now? Oh, we are on camera. And uh, I started scraping the rust off of it. Yeah. I just used some navel jelly on it. Yeah. Put it on it. I don't know. I'm going to try to take it out the factory one of these days and see if they'll paint it for me. There you go. Now, you have a couple of. Uh, of the milk stools that were never put into production, they were just kind of experimental. I experiment. had a couple of them, yes. They were an experimental job, and they decided they were too expensive to make. Okay. So they'd go back to the old one again. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you, Mr. Drobe. Appreciate you coming. And then I have one that they... Oh, I think he'll take care of himself. For I have one. When I first went to work there, the... Uh, Men that were in the boilers downstairs had to make the uh, milk tools up. They had a jig that they'd rivet the legs on and mm -hmm. put them on the top. They purchased the top already for them, then they'd make the legs and the round part that went in the middle, and they'd rivet them up. Of course, they run the boilers. They'd done the night watching. It was very nice. I, I was wondering, uh, you knew Roxy Ball, didn't you? He was, no. he, well, he was involved in all this. Oh, okay, too. okay. And I, I opened my big mouth and I asked Twink this afternoon if she was coming. She says, well, no, I'm not invited. Oh, well, we could have. She said she gave a lot of her memorabilia to Tom and okay. somebody else, she said. Well, I'll have to get in touch with her then. Yeah, okay. she said to kiss off. Okay. All right. Or tell her, next time you see her, tell her to give me a call. Okay, will do. We'd love to talk to her. Okay, it was very nice. Well, thank you for coming. Now, Roxy worked in the engineering department, and then he uh, went over and ran the plant over in Beards County, Illinois. Okay. They made the, over there, they made the outfit to grab the pipe on the Alaskan pipeline. Oh, really? They made the thing, well, we made the two parts of the water and then the other parts were made there. It was an automatic wrapper. You just roll it on the pipe and wrap it with the car paper and so forth, whatever put the wrap. Now, what do you got there in your hand? You need to get... That is a loud and pencil. We ship millions of them out, give them away to people. Isn't that something? Now, I was given one the other day that had the name loud and had red on it. So I don't know which one's older. Do you have any idea? I wouldn't have any idea. I imagine this one is older. Than yeah, that. probably. But that's that's going to be neat to have. Now the one I have already have has not been sharpened. And then we have the corn cob pipes. I've heard about those. When were those made? Well, I don't know when they started. They had them in bar lines for years and years, going around the shows and uh -huh. giving them away. So I've got one at home. So that wasn't just for the special, like a centennial thing? No, no, no. no. Okay. We had them there at all times. Say, Mr. Cameraman, you want to get a close-up of our pencil here? There you go. You want to hold that? we got two sides on it. This pencil just walked in the door this afternoon. It was picked up at... It's a way to people. Good old carpenter's pencil. Mm -hmm. And then we had corn cob pipes too we gave away. They was made down in Washington, Missouri. Mersham, Washington, Missouri. Mersham Pipe Company. Now did they say Loudon on them? Yeah, they okay. got on the stand they had Loudon on Okay, I've, you know, I've heard about them, I've never actually seen one. Yeah. Um, let's see, I lost my train of thought. Oh, the, you're, uh, you've got that, what do you call it, that, that license plate from the war. Yeah. That Masonite license plate, tell us about that. Well, uh, I don't remember the years right now, but Loudon didn't, or uh, Iowa didn't put out a front license plate. Okay. And Bryce Gamble, our uh, advertising man, he thought that was good thing, so he got a masonite piece just the size of a license plate. Yeah. And they had it uh, painted, and then, uh, oh, what is your guy that made this thing? Oh, Runquist. yeah, Mr. Carl, Carl Runquist. Made, uh, a silk screen. Okay. And they met this Loudon's name on it and that was what they put on the front license plate. Well that's great. Well they it seems like the company didn't miss a trick in terms of advertising. They thought of everything. Mm -hmm. 
there is. Well, of course, Bryce Gamble is the only one I remember when I was there. Okay. And he was a top. Now, what years were you there? I started in 41. Okay. Less than 84. So you were there a good, good long while. Now, do you remember Daryl Edeker? Yes. He was just in town the other day and gave, gave me a box of stuff. And there were some photographs in there I had not seen. So some of these days we need to get together and, and look at those. He didn't happen to give you a little miniature. There's a model cow stanchion and stall set up that's like one that's at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. What were some of the other models that you can remember? Well, uh, I had a model barn that was given to me. And I give it to my wife and cousin. Uh -huh. And it was a barn that stood, I praised three foot high. Oh my gosh. On a big piece of plywood. And it had cutaways in that barn of all the stalls and the stanchions, the hay carriers, milking parlors, everything in it. Thank but, you for nice well, time. Well, thank you. Okay, here we've got Dave McCoy here, Mrs. McCoy's son. Um, just wanted to tell you about a, a phone call I got from Tampa, Florida the other day. I was eating breakfast and uh, this guy says, oh, you don't know who I am and you probably think I'm crazy. I collect hay balers and <laughs> got a mule drawn hay baler I take around to fairs in North Florida and blah, 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 blah. Well, of course, I knew right away it was a loud call because I get these every once in a while. And he'd called the Chamber of Commerce here and they'd given me or given him my name. He had a panoramic photograph of a company of World War I soldiers and in the background was the words Loudoun Machinery Company, Fairfield, Iowa. And you have to take a magnifying glass to really see it. He says, do you want it? And I said, well, sure. <laughs> and I had pictured in my mind that it was probably like Company M assembled at the old freight depot in front mm -hmm. of the building, the factory building, and they were going to be shipped off to France or something and I was so excited. Anyway, I get this picture and it's, it's uh, packed in fiberglass insulation in a wooden box and I open it up and it's like not Fairfield at all and then I realized it was the state fairgrounds not at fair time but it was a company of soldiers on the parade ground kind of oh in the vicinity of the Bill Riley stage and you can see the varied industries building in the background and it's the Loudoun Machinery Company uh, it's their permanent display area oh. so that was real exciting to get that sure. Uh, it shows the context. You know, we've got pictures of displays inside of buildings, but never mm -hmm. the outside like that. So, I thought you'd yeah, like to know about yeah. that. Well, no, your wife said you were getting calls. So oh gosh, you just your can't. reputation has grown. Uh, and when we get this our, country and now worldwide, when we get our website going, <laughs> we'll be sorry. Well, thank you, Dave, and You're appreciate well, you bringing your mother. Well, and I, she wanted to come, and oh, I wanted bless to come her. too. Bless her heart. She's a wonderful yeah. person. Well, she's a great gal. Yeah. She's a great gal. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So did we finish talking about that barn? Well, I don't know whether we got it all done or not. But, you know. but this was a, a model. You're saying you think maybe Albert Neller made the... I would imagine he had something to do with it back in his day. Sure. See, Neller was about done there when I come to work. Okay, but you do remember it. I remember seeing him, yes. Now, he was just coming in as he pleased. His, the house he lived in is just a block west of where I live. Right. And the the garage, I suppose it was a horse barn at one time, behind the house used to have a birdhouse on top of it. Do you have any idea if that was something he made? Well, I wouldn't doubt but what he did make it. Because it, he was it's, handy. He could do anything. it's gone now. I photograph, you know, I did, this was before I knew that he lived there, but I happened to photograph that birdhouse. It was up on stilts and it, like a, oh, what do you call it? I remember it. it. Do you? It had probably places for 20 birds. Probably for Purple Martin. Yep, yep, a Martin house. And uh, I thought, well, that's kind of neat. I'm going to photograph that because it was kind of falling apart. And I wish now I'd scavenged it, but, well, you can't save everything. But what other kinds of models were made? Uh, well, I can remember Albert Johnson. He was working the experimental department. He drew a first hay dryer that Loudon's had. Oh, really? He made the main duct that went down through the middle of the barn, and they had laterals that went off to the side. And when he was checking that out, he made a miniature of that, and they tapered from wide to narrow mm -hmm. until they go to the end, and they put them down on the floor before they put the hay in. Okay. And then they had a big, I don't know, it must have been a five-inch fan with a seven or a ten-horse motor on it that would blow air through that to dry that hay. You'd fill it up mm -hmm. so high, and today you'd blow that air through there that 
at night, mm -hmm. usually you put hay in again the next day. Okay. You just keep continuing blowing hay into it. That sounds neat. You had little miniature. In fact, I got one of the little fans he had used down there for oh my gosh. display that he used. So it actually actually blew. Yeah, it was just a little open air motor, open motor with a fan on it. Oh, for heaven's sake! And then you said they made little uh, miniature hay carriers, and mm -hmm. now they were made out of aluminum, though. Yeah, they were made out of aluminum. They was probably oh, I would guess four size. Okay. Uh, the big full size one. Well, that's neat. Yeah, we, we eventually would like to have a, a full-blown display out of the fairgrounds or someplace, like a move a barn in or whatever. And, mm -hmm. and uh, the thing I think would be neat is if, if we could get a barn and have the actual different styles of stanchions and mangers and so forth, and uh, it could be kind of like a hall of honor for the champion cattle and, and well, see, uh, so forth. At one time, Loudon's had on the third floor, they had a whole room mm -hmm. that had a display or they made wooden framed like it was cement mm -hmm. and they'd stand Where they these, put sand like mix sand yeah, and paint. Mixed sand okay. and paint on it and uh, they had a complete display of almost everything we made in that room. Now would they use masonite for the curved surfaces or or no do you I imagine it was probably metal. Okay. And then they just paint sand it, okay. Paint and put okay. sand on it. Because I know some of the catalogs have the the forms and different tools that mm -hmm. you could use for forming well, the see, cement. We made a, a metal form to, so they could form that concrete. Sure, sure. Well, there was just a barn. Mark, what can I get you to drink? I'm fine. Thank Are you. Are you sure? Honey, you're on TV. Did you know that? I don't know. When? Well, you could right now. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> you can get me to drink whatever you want, me, want to get me. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Um, I remember one time Bryce Gamble had a big sign. He hung it up in the shipping room. Oh, it was bigger than that... Uh, I was best square sign. Yeah. And it had a big picture of a cow on it and said up above it, for crying out loud, give the girl loudness. <laughs> well, you know, they I think they did try to use a little humor every once in a while because mm -hmm. we have a picture of, um, oh, for heaven's sake, is it Stallman transfer? Yeah. And it was, oh, what's her name? Mrs. Is it Mrs. Lynn? Floyd Lynn's wife. Yes, yes. She was a great uh, Stallman's Daughter. Right. Okay. She. I talked to her last summer, I think, and she loaned me a picture I photocopied, and it's a picture of her when she was about 10 in an old Settlers Day parade, and it's her dad and her on top of his cage on top of one of their transfer wagons and their team, and they're all decked out in plumes and bunting and everything, and they've got a cow inside that big cage. It's made out of the, the loud and piping, and it said something about a, they wanted a deer in there, but it wouldn't stay around so they had to fall back on the old reliable uh, the dairy cow and then the loud name was every place yes and stallman come over there every day be able there all day had a couple men that worked there uh -huh. and pick up stuff at loudon's and take it over to the different railroad cars uh-huh the like the one going to chicago one kansas city that was they was loading at the rock island railroad Depot. yeah tom told me tom loudon told me that uh, loudon was the biggest freight customer that rock island had and even up until, oh, the late 40s, early 50s, if the train found out, the railroad found out that a Loudon was riding, they got real good treatment. So all, I, all you had to do is drop your name and you were treated like a king, when which I, I thought was neat. In the shipping room, we loaded out carloads of uh, freight to uh, Albany, New York, uh -huh. a branch, and uh, Toledo, Ohio, and St. Paul, Minnesota. Okay. And then they had a big dealer down in Greensboro, North Carolina. And there were two big companies out on the West Coast, and we'd ship a half a cargo to one company and half a cargo to the other. A busy, busy place. Well, Bud, I can't think of too much more. You're, you're Bud Dimmitt, by the yeah. way. I don't, I don't know if I introduced you at the beginning of our talk, but I really appreciate the help you've given us in terms of, you know, Oh, some of the uh, paper items you've given us, and those couple of hay carriers. The the one the one that I really appreciated was the the old that, single pulley job. Yeah, and then there but the parts catalog, the mm -hmm. one that had all the casting numbers on it. Because when I had talked to um, oh, what's his name in Atumwa? Oh, for heaven's sake, just passed away a couple of years ago. Very wise. No, anyway, 
I was talking to him, and he could remember all the casting numbers on all these pictures. Les Pomeroy. Yes, Les Pomeroy. He could remember all the casting numbers, and I thought, oh my gosh, I need to talk to this guy sometime. He had and, the best mind of anybody oh, I knew. <laughs> it was amazing. Well, then when I finally got a hold of that little catalog of yours, I had all the castings in it, so I didn't have to worry about pinning him down on anything. But yeah, he had a phenomenal memory about uh, see, about all that stuff. Agent for yeah, years there. yeah. Well, he t he told the story. You know, it's time to get time to get this on camera. Um, Frank, you want to bring that notebook over? We may as well get you on TV while we're at it. I I feel so powerful. Here. Yeah, have a seat. I don't really need to be sitting. Well, but you're you're our new you're our new uh, supervisor that sits in on our meetings. Um, I don't know if the camera can get this or not. This one right here. Whoops. Oh, the card. The card. Mr. Pomeroy, yeah, Les Pomeroy was telling me about, he remembered as a, as a young boy, or a young man, I guess he was about 17, 18, William Loudon was still alive and he'd come through the uh, factory every once in a while. And Les said that uh, Loudon would do magic tricks and he could remember him poking his finger through a piece of paper. He couldn't remember what the trick was, but some, something to do with a piece of paper and poking his finger through it. Well, about a year later, Scott Renneker's dad. Oh, for heaven's sake. What's Scott Renneker's dad's name? He used to work at Renneker and French Renneker. Emily's the mom. Emily's yeah. the mom. And they live in a, yeah, their house used to be green. and Yeah, they live in a house. Blah, 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 blah in South Maine. It doesn't matter. Anyway, all I can think of is Daryl Edeker. Anyway, Mr. Mr. Whoever gave me this card that was in his dad's stuff. Dan. Dan, Dan Renneker. I'm, you can see, now just imagine me in the classroom trying to remember kids' names. It's terrible. Um, anyway, this is an enlargement, but it was this card and it had a hole in it. And it says, can you push a hat through the hole in this card? A full-size hat, you know, you can't damage the card, you can't damage the hat. And I asked it, and I'm sure this is the trick that Les was remembering. And I asked and asked, can anybody figure out this, this puzzle? Well, I was having Diana Peck over at the high school do some copying for us, and uh, Dr. Kelly had let us, you know, supply the paper, and then Diana would, would copy things for us. And her daughter in third grade saw that, and she says, oh, well, Mom, that's easy. You just stick your finger through the hole and then push the hat. Because everybody else is trying to picture how you get the hat, pull it through the hole. <laughs> oh, boy. So it took an eight-year-old or ten-year-old to figure that out. Sure. But the mystery has been solved. But it just tickled me that we'd have this anecdote from from Les and Les Pumroy and then fill in the pieces as you go. So that's that's been fine. While we're while we've got this, um, this is a notebook that shows pictures um, that are in the uh, Smithsonian collection. They have that glass plate negative collection. I suppose there's twenty glass plate na negatives. Do you have any idea how old those were? No. Were, I'm guessing novelists. from the teens. They were there from the teens, but they were publicity shots. Anyway, uh, people wishing to uh, honor a relative, whether they had a, a connection with Loudon or not, uh, for $75, we'll order one of these prints from the Smithsonian and then have it framed with uh, a proper inscription on a, a brass plate negative, or brass plate name card. I'm getting talked out here. Whoops. Uh, this is a series that we've already had um, reserved. Um, it shows the construction of a Loudon barn. You have a, the silo and the bricks piled up and then down below you've got the barn rising. It's a masonry ground floor with a frame uh, uh, hay mow. And then they're putting in the rafters. Here I should be using my Loudon pencil to point. <laughs> yeah, this will be more artistic. You've got the, the masonry ground floor and the, and then the raftering. And then we have uh, two views of the finished piece, or the finished building. And here's the other side. Um, Dave and Sally Neff have ordered two of these in memory of Sally's father, Mac Reinhardt. Uh, Gay Chapman has ordered one in memory of her son, Bryce Stever. I believe Gene Ludke is going to have one in memory of his dad, uh, who built a barn using Loudon principles and equipped it certainly with Loudon stanchions. And then uh, the Gentries in Bloomfield, uh, Mr. and Mrs. H.B. Gentry are 
uh, having one framed in memory of her father-in-law, who was, I believe, a plant manager. He was plant manager. When plant I was manager. Working. Okay. He hired me. There you go. Thank you, Frank. But uh, any, we've got some more prints available. Now there's a one-man band. Yep. Well, that's a, that's a small one. They had a big one too. It had okay. two of them arches set apart so far. Okay. And it had more stuff on it. And we've I've highlighted. We've we have some of the things. We have the the name card holder, and we've you know. Uh, Bud here gave us some of the connecting, or what do you call these, coupling? Well, that is the elbow. Okay, but there's couplings or connections? There's elbows, and this is a right angle connection here. Okay. It goes through there and ends up in that way. But we have, we have the, is that the iron claw? That's the iron claw. We've got the iron claw fork, and we've got some stanchions. One stanchion. And we've got some of the pulleys, but we don't, we don't have a senior carrier yet. You don't have a senior? No, nope. so we're... Gene Luke, he thinks he might have one, so we got to poke around. There'll be stuff. a lot of them around. Yeah, there should be. We've got a junior carrier um, that was given to us, but uh, I'd like and to. I'd give you a standard carrier yep. and a uh, well, it was an old single pulley stacker. Yep. Yep. Uh, They're beauties. Yeah. It was used to fly, huh? Yep. Okay. All right, but I think one of our goals should be to uh, recreate the one-man band, and I've going I've gone through the old catalogs and. They had several versions of this. Some were real simple. Some of the early ones had maybe just a, a door hanger with a small section of door and one of the hay carriers. Others are, like Bud was saying, were even bigger than this. So if anybody has some pulleys, unusual pulleys, we have a few pulleys, but if you have unusual ones, especially if they have the original gray paint, um, that would be appreciated. Any of these coupling pieces, Bud gave us a few of them, but we still need a few. So thank you, Frank, for holding sure. that up. So come on down to the Chamber of Commerce and take a look at our collection of Loudoun Machinery Company catalog pages and see if you can find the area on the measured drawing that is being illustrated in the, in the framed pictures. Thanks for viewing FPAC, and uh, give me a call if you have any questions.